Hello Aries, this is here with a general reading for the sign of Aries. My beautiful friends, welcome to this space. It is always wonderful to have you here and I'm happy to be here as well. Um, I, I invite you here and I hope that you find something within this reading, within, the, within this information that helps bring you um, comfort and um, guidance as you move forward. I'm going to begin to shuffle now. Before I do, I would like to remind everyone that this is a general reading. Um, it will um, probably not resonate with everyone. It may only fit um, really closely with a few of you, but hopefully there's something here that you can take with you as you um, journey ahead. Um, so let's go ahead and shuffle. And then when I'm done with the shuffling, uh, I'll, I'll obviously begin. Uh, for those people who don't like the shuffling, just move forward to where the reading begins. And um, I don't mind if you do that at all. So let's go ahead and get started now. Looking now at the general energy for the sign of Aries, looking at the general energy for the sign of Aries, what's happening now with this group of Aries? What's happening now? What's happening now for this group of Aries people? What's happening now? now. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle for the immediate future and then the guidance and then we'll begin. So the next immediate future, the next forecast for this group of Aries people. Is the next immediate future, the next forecast for this group of Aries people? What is the next immediate future, the next forecast for this group of Aries people? What is the next immediate forecast? message and let's look at guidance please guidance please All right, Aries, we're ready to start. Um, before I do, I would like to um, remind you that we are all very different as, as each individual peoples. Um, we are one humanity. We are one um, human um, race, but we are very different as individuals that we all have very complicated personalities. We have all different histories um, of, of different experiences that we live through that have um, built our character and built what we believe. And so... Um, we, we also have different strengths and different weaknesses within us, and we all move at different speeds because of that. We all live around the world in different cultures. Um, some of us think of as time um, as something that really can um, organize our day, and some of us feel like time doesn't really matter as much. Um, so we're, we're all different. And so when we talk about time, please allow yourself to be flexible. And I, I must also allow myself to be flexible when I talk about timing with the tool of tarot. Um, also, there will be an extended reading after this reading that will look at the people who are around you and what their perspectives are um, pertaining to this scenario or what is really driving their motivations in life. And we'll also look at, um, take this scenario out into the future. Um, um, however we feel, however I feel at the time, however far it will maybe go, I'll look um, at, we'll look at taking this scenario out into the future to give you some ideas of what could really happen for this group of people so that you can, that you can help plan um, and you can receive some guidance about possibly how you could be um, expecting the future to, to sort of pan out for you. So let's go ahead now and start and look at these energies. I'll go ahead and turn over these cards. Sometimes when they, they come in um, face down, it's, it's um, interesting to leave them like that, I think, um, when, when I shuffle live in front of you. Though I know it is a recorded reading. 
I'm doing this in a very live format and my videos are not edited in any way unless sometimes if, if somebody knocks on the door or I have to go to the bathroom or something. So let's go ahead and um, start. We, we start this off with a judgment energy. The next card um, next to that is the Ace of Wands. Then we have the Three of Swords and then the Six of Pentacles. So um, let's go ahead and, and sink down in this now. We have the judgment energy, and when when we get the judgment energy, it, it talks about consequences, consequences to the actions that we've taken in our life. And these could be good consequences. These could be consequences that require us to take action in some way, to fix something. Um, the judgment energy is an energy that cleans, it cleanses, it cleanses the soul, it cleanses how we feel about our life. And um, <clears throat> just like... Um, if we have bumps and bruises on our body and we go into the shower or we go into some bath water, that can sting a little bit as it cleans the sores that are on our body. So um, with the judgment energy, uh, this is a, an energy that can sting a little bit when it happens to us. But when it's over, we feel refreshed. We feel like we have a new start in life. Um, it can help us, you know, when we clean our bodies, when we clean um, our energy, it can help us see what we haven't seen. Um, it, when we clean the dirt off of a scrape on our knee, we can really then see what the wound is, and then we can begin to heal it um, with the judgment energy. So this is an energy that you um, possibly have been in. Aries, where you have really been able to see um, what's happened. You, you might have had to really become aware of something that you've done in the past or decisions that have been made around you or decisions that you have made that have created um, um, cause and effect in, in your life that have instigated something or initiated something. Um, and with the judgment energy, it usually leaves us in, in um, a, um, a reverence or it leaves us with a deeper understanding that the world is bigger than we thought it was, the energies are more powerful than we thought they were, and that there is something else here besides us in the world um, that we maybe perhaps can't see, and that we maybe perhaps can't understand, that can ultimately be a help to us. So uh, the judgment energy is is an energy that is sometimes... Um, it can sting a little bit, but ultimately it helps us really to, to find the answers and it helps us move forward um, in, in a more clean way or in a, in a refreshed way in life. We do have next to the judgment energy, the Ace of Wands energy. And the Ace of Wands energy is a passionate new beginning in something. It's a new start in, in our journeys or in our lives. There's something here that bring, builds the energy within you, that fills you with energy to move forward, that gives you that spurt of, I, I want to keep saying energy, and I'm trying to think of another way of saying it. It helps you move forward. It helps you um, like me, I like to sit in my recliner. I like to put my feet up. I like to be on my tablet. Um, that's what I like to do in my off time sometimes. And sometimes when I get this Ace of Wands energy, I'm all of a sudden I'm up out of there for so, no reason. Like what happened? Yesterday I wasn't able to do that. But today I'm up and I'm out of there and I'm going and I'm stepping outside and I'm initiating things. And I'm getting things planned and I'm um, coming up with ideas to do this and to that. That's the Ace of Wands energy. It, it helps us move forward. It helps us get up and go. It helps us do things, right? And it's that energy um, that Aries can really hold really well with the Ace of Wands. So you could be really feeling that energy in your life right now, whether it's something big that you're doing or just in everyday things that might, in, in different, in everyday actions that might have been hard for you to do before. Um, because it does look like something has come in and cleansed you in some way. Um, so you're feeling lighter, you're feeling more energetic, you're feeling able to do things that perhaps you hadn't been able to do before. This really talks about healing. And with the Three of Swords, um, we do see that there has been some past here. So uh, there has been some hurt here in the past. So I think what's happened here is you could have been going through some healing, some healing energy. And when we go through healing, a lot of times, um, just like me, I've been going through healing from the past now um, for, for a good solid year, maybe longer than that, um, and of coming up with new awareness and um, finding new understanding within myself. 
um, we can go through healing periods. And when we go through he healing periods, it does um, take a lot of energy out of us. We might not be able to do the things that we used to do, or we might have a harder time just doing normal things like keeping our house clean or doing the dishes um, or, or taking care of our yards or just doing basic tasks. It might be hard to do that when you're going through a period of healing. Even if you've uh, um, had stress or anxiety in our lives that can take energy out of us so that we don't have as much strength to do the things that we normally did when we weren't going through a period of healing right so with this three of swords it tells me that um th there is an awareness now of hurt awareness now of anxiety and once we have an awareness it's easier than to tackle it it's easier than to understand it. It's when we don't have the awareness of it that it becomes hard. Because if we don't have an understanding, if we don't see the truth, if we don't know why we're like that, it's really hard to start digging in and working to fix it. So I see that there is some sort of, of pain here um, that you might have been working through. Um, but I don't think that it's really going to um, create a whole lot of... Um, um, blockages or challenges for you anymore because we do have the six of pentacles and the six of pentacles is a harmonizing harmonizing energy and um, the six of pentacles can be a healing energy as well because it brings in equality in our in our realities it helps us understand the the importance of having resources of having enough money of having enough um, fair transactions in our life um, so I think that this anxiety and this stress could have something to do with how you're feeling about the energy that you give out into the world and the energy that you give out to other people. Um, because I think you're starting to realize here, or you have realized it, or you're, you are living in this energy now of understanding that you, that, that in order for us to give, in order for us to be generous, in order for us to um, even accept handouts, we have to um, understand what the trade off is for that. What is the transaction here? If I'm going to be giving a lot of myself, what am I going to be receiving? Am I going to be receiving inspiration? Because inspiration is great, is of great value to us. Inspiration can really help us move forward and feel beautiful in our lives. Um, what am I giving? What am I getting when I am giving something? Am I not getting anything? Am I not really inspired by it? Am I just doing it because um, my family wants me to do it or my spouse wants me to do it? Um, and I'm not, I'm leaving that situation where I'm giving, feeling empty, feeling like I've just given something and I have, I'm leaving empty and I'm leaving tired. Or am I realizing, well, I'm not really fulfilled by doing that. Um, but I'm really excited about doing this over here. I think I'm going to start focusing over here and working over here. Either I'm re getting uh, money for doing that, or I'm receiving inspiration, or I've, I'm receiving um, a love that really helps me to heal. Um, so you're, you're understanding here with the Six of Pentacles that when we give or when we receive, um, we, we must also have an exchange. So if you've been getting something from someone, if you've been receiving something, what is it that you're going to do in exchange so that you feel good about receiving it? Are you going to pass it forward and help other people? Are you going to give money for it? Are you going to exchange money for it? Um, how, how will you be fair in your life? And I think with the Six of Pentacles, it's that, that it's here. It tells me that you're, fo that you have an understanding on this and that you're able to really, um, focus down on this and understand how important it is in life to be able to, to be able to carry out transactions in the way we work so that we are not left tired, feeling depleted, feeling like life is unfair, that we have a responsibility in our lives to make sure that the transactions that we're making are fair transactions. And sometimes this can be really hard. It's really hard um, for me to do this. And I'm learning in my life how to do this um, at the age of 47. So I have lived probably more than half of my life. And now, even at this point in time, I'm learning how to do this. And I think as human beings, we go through this. Um, there are some of you that are listening that have never had a problem with that. And there are some of you that are here that absolutely have a challenge with that, right? So we're all different people. But um, with the Six of Pentacles, it tells me that there's a balancing now, that whatever you're doing, whatever you're extending your energy for, you're getting something in return that helps you um, bring even a foundation, a financial um, ease in your life, or it helps you feel inspired in your life, or it's giving you energy to move forward in some way. 
Um, it's, it's filling your heart in some way. There's something that you're receiving in exchange for your energy now that's helping you feel more balanced in your life. It's bringing in safety and security, and it's helping you feel that the world is a much more fair place than it was before, probably before when you were in the Three of Swords. All right, so that's the current energy. Um, ho hopefully there are some of you here that have resonated with that. I'm going to move forward, taking this scenario out into the future now to see um, what the next immediate um, future is going to bring. And because we're also very different, it's really hard to put a time on this. But I would say that um, I would hope that Spirit would bring forward a message for us that wouldn't drag on too long because these are meant to be shorter. Um, the, these are meant to be shorter messages. All right, give me a moment to settle into these energies. These are going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, not to say that they're bad. It just takes me a little bit more time to kind of get into these energies, especially when we have reversals coming out. And the way that I do reversals is I have all the decks, all the cards in the deck um, in the upright when I shuffle. And when they flip out and they land in the reverse, unless um, I have a feeling not to do it, I will take them in the reverse. So we have two reversals here. So give me one moment here to kind of get into this and see what I can do to figure out what this is trying to say to us. Okay, so I am going to clarify a couple of the cards here, um, or, or maybe just one. I have to see how I feel about this as I move through. So um, well, let's start out with the Queen of Pentacles. So we have the Queen of Pentacles next to the King of Wands, next to the Nine of Wands, next to the Four of Swords. On the bottom row, we have the King of Swords in reverse. We have the Three of Wands in the upright, and we have the Queen of Cups in the reverse. So... We do have a feminine energy here. Now, when I say feminine energy and a masculine energy, it does not mean that I'm talking about females and males. I'm talking about within each and every one of us, we have a feminine and a masculine energy. The feminine energy is more introspective. The masculine energy is more action oriented. The feminine energy is more about a belief system, more about deep um, mystery and, and the unknown and about how we're feeling within ourselves. If we're feeling like we're taking care of ourselves or if we're feeling like we're um, um, overlooking what our own body and mind and heart needs, the masculine energy is more about taking action in the external world, making things happen, doing things, getting things done. Um, so that's for me, that's my understanding of how the feminine and the masculine works together. So um, when I say a feminine energy and when I say a masculine energy, I'm talking about a person who is mostly in a feminine energy where the feminine energy is the dominant energy at this time and the masculine energy would be the dominant energy at this time. And these energies can change depending on what we're going through in our lives. They can even change day by day right? One day you might be trying to figure out what, what you're doing with a project and why you're doing this project um, and your belief system in the project. And the next day you might be at a presentation and you might be presenting something to a group of people. So those are two different energies and those are two different dominant feminine and dominant masculine energies. So with the Queen of Pentacles, this is a feminine energy. And this is a feminine energy that is much um, aware of the details of life, the details of money, the details of why things happen. What are we going to do with this bunch of money? What are we going to do with this um, allocation over here? Um, how are we going to put these two together to make this work for us? Because tomorrow we need to go buy something. And it's, it's that kind of a thinking with a detail-oriented thinking. And it usually has something to do with our resources, our money, our assets, what we own, 
um, and how we're going to implement things, how we're going to carry things out and get things done um, with the Queen of Pentacles. Now, we have the King of Swords in reverse over the top of the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Wands. So I think here um, there is something, uh, Aries, that you're working towards um, with the King of Wands. I think you're you're getting ready to go into action here. You're getting ready to um, take action and build something or create something or move into a new plane um, and, and start something new or fix something. Remember, the King of Wands is an energy that fixes things, that builds things, that constructs things. Um, the King of Wands is an energy very much. It is your energy, um, Aries. It's a, it's, a, it's a passionate energy. It's an action-oriented energy. And that's how you feel most comfortable. Now, remember, Aries, you could be here because you have an Aries sun. Most of you are here because you have an Aries sun. Some of you could be here because you have an Aries moon or an Aries rising or an Aries Venus. And you have to remember that the sun energy is, is um, an all-encompassing energy. The moon energy is about your emotions. The rising energy is about how you appear to the world and how the world sees you. And the Venus energy is how you love. So... Um, you're, that's why everyone is resonating with these readings differently and everybody moves differently because our natal charts are complicated. So when I say that you, you are in an energy, um, you have, um, it's, there, there's something here that you're trying to figure out because you're ready, to, you're getting ready to take action now and do something in your life with the King of Wands energy, getting out and going, getting up and getting going, right? With the King of Wands, the King of Wands doesn't have a whole lot of fear. He might have fear. He might have reservations about it, but he's able to step through that. He's able to see the bigger picture. He's able to see the final product. He's able to see what it's going to look like when it's done and what good it will bring to the world around it. That's what the King of Wands can do. Um, he can be a little bit confident. He can be a little bit arrogant. Yes, he can. And those are all energies that we need to have at some point in another, uh, some point or another, if we're going to do something great for ourselves, right? These are energies that we have been given by our creator. Whatever we believe in, these are energies and emotions and ways of thinking that we have been given to use in, um, in, in helpful ways in our lives. Sometimes we use them in ways that are, that are, um, destructive. But when we're in good energy and when we're healthy and when we have a powerful, healthy mindset, we can use these emotions to our to to help better ourselves and the world around us. So with this Queen of Pentacles here with the King of Swords in reverse over the top of the King of Wands, it, it feels to me like um, you're you're looking at the details here. You're trying to figure out how exactly everything is going to come together. You are trying to make a decision here. You're trying to be very careful about how to move forward. You might not have a whole lot of money. You might have a limited amount of resources. You might have a small group of people that you're working with, not a big group of people. Um, and, and you might have some limitations. You might have some limitations in what you're doing. So you're, you're trying to figure out, okay, how exactly is this going to work? Because I'm ready to go. Like this project is ready to go. So I, I think here with the King of Swords, it's just a matter of looking at the pieces, pulling all the pieces together and seeing what the big picture is and really making making decisions. The one thing that the King of Swords does that's really powerful, he does a lot of really beautiful things, the King of Swords, but one thing that he can really help with within us, the fragment that is our King of Swords, each and every one of us has this fragment within us, this fragment can help us make decisions. This fragment within us can help us think clearly um, and help us make decisions because we're going to ultimately have to make a decision. And the decision might not be the right decision. How are you going to know? You're going to make the best decision possible and then start to take action. And if the decision has some errors in it, then you can edit them. You can fix them. You can revise what you're doing. But when the King of Swords is in reverse, it tells me there's a hesitation here to make a decision. Um, ultimately, the Queen of Pentacles is able to make decisions. I'm not really worried that the King of Swords is in reverse. It just tells me that there is a need to look at the at the 
little pieces and then put it all together. The fact that you're in the Queen of Pentacles tells me that you're going to absolutely be able to do that because that's what the Queen of Pentacles does. She can look at the little pieces and she can, um, with the King of Swords here, she, once she starts implementing that fragment, she'll be able to see the big picture and then she'll be able to make a decision. So I'm not worried about that at all. It's just part of the process, part of the game here, part of this journey for you. Um, and so I see here with the King of Wands energy, um, you're ready to get going on something. I see you start to take action with something you're feeling pretty optimistic about it um you, you're feeling enthusiastic about it you could have a lot of energy you could feel like your energy might be stronger than other people's energy and you could feel like you might be overpowering them you might be um you know, you could feel that way, but just remember now um, of what your natural abilities are and who you are and what you do best and just allow those thoughts to move through you. And if there's something that you need to mute down or change, go ahead and do that. Um, it's okay if we ourselves change the way we are, but it's, it's more concerning when someone else says, you know what? I don't really like your energy. You're just too excited. You're too optimistic for me. No, that's not acceptable. The only way it's good to change our energies from my perspective, now this is my perspective, is for us to have this this knowledge within ourselves, for us to make this realization for ourselves. Now, if other people tell us, you know what, your energy is just really too strong for me today. Um, sorry, uh, just a message, personal message came through there for me. Um, but if you're, um, because I just actually um, have been reminded, I just went through this this morning. Um, but if your energy is um, too strong for other people and you hear them say, but no one said this to me, I just had this thought that maybe I'm too strong for my sister-in-law who came over and I was so excited about something and I was going on and on. And then after she left, I was thinking, maybe I was too excited about that. You know, that kind of a feeling. No one said anything to me. Um, I have a beautiful um, sister-in-law and I, I love her. So um, it, it, when people say that sometimes we're, we're outlandish, our energy is too strong, uh, it doesn't mean that we should be able to, we should change ourselves, but it doesn't mean that we can't take a look at it either and say, well, maybe I was a little bit too strong. We can think those things about ourselves and it's okay to analyze ourselves, but please only change yourself if you come to a peaceful resolution about that within yourself. Otherwise, know that the way you are is how you're meant to be and that you have um, something that you're doing in this world, in your own community or within your home or within your workplace or whatever your environment is that's important to the world around you. And yes, sometimes people can, oh, I see, here's the nine of wands. I get it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we're moving into the nine of wands. I see. So um, sometimes people can say things to us that can hurt us or make us feel defensive. Just understand that um, if, if you're feeling defensive about what you're doing, you're excited about it, you're full of energy, you're taking, because look at this, look at this passion here. We have the three of wands, the king of wands, and the nine of wands. These, this is a very passionate energy that you're in, Aries, as you move forward. So you might have people here questioning you. You might be defensive about what you're doing. You might be a little sensitive about what you're doing. The Nine of Wands, remember, it is a it is a wounded warrior energy. Um, that is a common term um, with tarot, and I think that it has a lot of validity. Um, when we say wounded warrior, what does that mean? When we've been through a war and we've been wounded, how do we feel about war? How do we feel about people who have the same energy as the people that we um, fought with in, in the war that we have just fought? And, you know, the people that we have just um, earned bumps and bruises with. We can be very sensitive. We can be very defensive. We can be triggered. We can be, um, we can have very interesting responses to people when they say things to us. Maybe they don't understand at all. You know, maybe they don't understand at all about what they're saying, but we can, that really affects us. Maybe that's just words coming out of their mouth and they have something they want to express, but they don't understand those words that they say could really prick. They could really dig into an old sore that we have, right? So sometimes with the nine of wands, with the wounded warrior energy, it is an energy where we're sensitive and other people might not understand why we're being sensitive. And sometimes we might have to just explain it a little bit. You know, it's because 
maybe a long time ago I went through this experience and now when when people talk about that I might just have a really strong reaction and I myself don't even really understand it but I'm trying to work on it and then some you know you can have these conversations to explain this but if we don't understand it in the beginning it's really hard to it's really even hard to know so that is what the journey is of the human experience to really dig down into our psyches and understand our own individual journeys and our own individual selves and no one can really do that better than ourselves can they so with the nine of wands energy it is an energy of being slightly defensive nevertheless i don't see that um that you're changing anything i think that you're excited about what you're doing i think as soon as you come up with this decision that you need to make or the details fall into place for yourself i think that um you're going to continue to move forward um i there might be a, a short resting period here the king of wands might have a, a, a the king of wands fragment within you might have a short delay um here because i i see um, a lot of i see the king this is what i i'm feeling here um, over the next period of time, you could be waiting for something to, to fall into place here with the King of Swords. The King of Swords, let's re move it forward now, um, change the energy just a little bit. And there could be a decision that you're waiting to make, or maybe you're waiting to get funding on something, or maybe you're waiting for an approval through a department to come through, or there could be this waiting energy. There's something that you could be waiting on here. Um, Something that you did with paperwork or something that you did with money or something that you did with details. You could be waiting on something to happen. Um, and then, and as you see, these energies are, are still, all of these energies are quiet. This King of Wands is quiet right now. The Nine of Wands is standing quiet. The Three of Wands is excited, but it's kind of standing still. And here we have the Four of Swords um, sitting still with the Queen of Cups. So in the Queen of Cups in reverse, I'll get to the Queen of Cups in reverse in a minute. So the next period of time, you could just be kind of waiting. I think you're dreaming. I think you're planning. I think that you are understanding what your motivations are, what your ambitions are, why you have this drive and this passion to do this. And that's helping you to find answers here for yourself. Because what we, the things that we want to do, the actions that we want to take in our lives, they're not usually just one they're multifaceted, aren't they? Um, if we're doing something for our work, our, aren't um, us as humans um, much more able to find satisfaction in it, in it if we can justify why we're doing that work? Why am I sitting here with you today? I'm sitting here with you today because this is a passion for me to reach out and help people because I have been in the deep dark quite a bit in my life, just like many of you and all of you have. And when I was in the deep dark, I said I was going to stay here and help people when I was done. And I know that might be silly, but that's something I really, really resonate with. Now, also, I do extended readings and I earn something from those because this is my work. And I'm also doing this because I need to make money to be able to do this. So just the fact that I'm making money doing this and I'm also feeling a, a strong urge to do this because I want to help people and I want to bring messages through um, that I can do that now. I can bring messages through for you that are not of my own mind, that are of a higher energy meant just for you, for each and every one of you. I know I have that capacity now and that's why I'm here. It's not just for one reason or another, right? And so I think um, for, for me, when I'm in this energy um, with the Nine of Wands, it's understanding why exactly am I here? Why am I standing tall? Why am I going through this journey? Because of what I believe. And it's not just one thing. And it's not just one reason. So this stillness here that I see um, could be very valuable for you as you kind of create um, this web of understanding about why you're in the king of wands why are you building this why are you creating this for yourself right so i see a little bit of a standstill here or a slowdown as you um think about the future dream about the future imagine the future you see it getting closer you find understanding about why you're here and you're prepared to move forward as we end out this period of time um, in the future here, we have the Four of Swords in the upright over the top of the Queen of Wands. I think there is some healing to be done with the Queen of, not the Queen of, of the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Cups. I think there is some healing here to be done with the Queen of Cups. Um, when the Queen of Cups is in, in reverse, I think this is talking about having some deep hurt, having some healing that's going on. It might even be some mood swings here with the Queen of Cups. You might have even um, felt like 
Um, there has been somebody around you or an energy around you that could be creating instability in your life or creating an energy even of betrayal or, or of hurt with the Queen of Cups. This is an energy of needing to really focus on oneself and find compassion and love again to heal. Um, and I think it's very, um, it's very beautiful that the Queen of Cups is in reverse over the top of the Four of Swords. That, that exactly is what the Queen of Cups in reverse is. It is the need to heal and find, and find inner strength again and really learn how to love yourself exactly who you are. Exactly who you are. Exactly how your body looks, exactly how your face looks, how your hair is, however you like it. What do you like about yourself and what do you want to do to help yourself as you move forward? And how can you help your heart um, feel feel um, safe and protected and warm again um, with the Queen of Cups? And sometimes with the Four of Swords, this is what, it, what we mean by going into a restful place and, and understanding that rest is part of revival. Rest is part of um, finding yourself again and gaining strength again. And there is usually a delay when it comes to resting. Resting and, and healing and connecting in to your energy centers and connecting into who you are and connecting into what brings you guidance and what helps you feel reverent for your life, which is usually an energy that we find above us. Um, through the crown chakra, through wh who, whatever we believe in as part of our guidance system with, with the four of swords. So this next period of time, I think there's some waiting here, waiting for some details to come through, making decisions about how to move forward, um, feeling passionate, feeling that urgency come in, um, start understanding and realizing what, why we're here and why are we doing the things that we're doing, and then healing from a period of time um, where you maybe suffered uh, abuse, went through a, a um, an experience where you did not have stability in your life, where you did not understand what wellness was, um, what caring for yourself really was, or what what it really felt like. And now you're in this place here of healing, connecting in with yourself. The Four of Swords is also an energy of understanding the importance of doing that, understanding the importance of taking time out of a busy schedule or out of a busy day to find peace and serenity in the worlds around us. And I saw, know some of us are very busy people. We have children, we have jobs. Maybe some of us has two or, have two or three jobs that we do, and it's really hard to find this time. So for some of you, I think my life has really kind of settled down now, but um, years ago, I was very busy. And just even up until a year ago, I was so busy that I did not really have any time for myself. Um, and so I think that I, as my life has changed, as I've kind of um, made changes and transformations in my life, I've come to understand how quieting the life, slowing down sometimes can really begin to help us, whether you do it in the middle of the night, in the early morning, late at night, at lunchtime in your car, or, or somewhere where you can find peace and quiet. It's really um, very beneficial to um, take some time to be in the quiet Focus in, understanding how our body is feeling, how our mind is feeling, how our heart center is feeling, and connecting into the um, energy above us, whether we do that with white light, whether we do that with prayer, however we do that, connecting into what brings us guidance, what helps us feel reverent in life. I know that many cultures, cultures do that differently around the world, and um, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to experience when we can connect in to the higher power. And um, I, I just find that quite attractive when, when people do that. And I find it attractive for myself when I do it. And I'm finally in my life learning how to actually do it at, again, the age 47 or 46. I can't hardly remember. I never remember how old I am. So let's go ahead and move on to the guidance now. Enough about me. Let's see what the guidance is as we, as we move forward here. All right, so we have the Nine of Cups and the Four of Pentacles. With the Nine of Cups is an energy of um, personal enjoyment of life. So remember, this is guidance now. This is um, messages coming through um, um, through me that are, um, hopefully, if I can do this right, that I can listen um, and, and send messages for through me for you. Um, so I'm going to do my best here to listen to the messages that come through. 
um, for for the the people that are listening to this reading, and for also for me, um, the message that's coming <clears throat> that is coming through is to take time now to enjoy life. We um, as a people, see this is resonating with me, <laughs> and the rest of it didn't really have this response. So this is this is for each and every one of us that are here, the people of the world now. are standing still. The world is coming to a slowdown. And there's silence as we think about our quality of life and the people that we have around us who we love. And as Jody thought earlier, it's interesting that the children are being spared because usually in tragedies, children are not spared for some reason. And that's really hard to understand. But now we have a chance to slow down and to see the world around us and to hear the voices of our loved ones. Even if we decide we shouldn't see them, if they're elderly or if they're older, maybe we have a cold or we don't feel well and we make a decision through the love that we have for people to speak to them over the phone or through a video chat, that it's time now that we can, many of us come to a slower pace and connect with the people who are around us. And this is one of the meanings of the Nine of Cups. It's human connection, human enjoyment. What do we value as human beings on this planet? Do we value the rat race? Do we value the politics? What do we value? And each and every one of us will have their own personal preference. And some of us do value politics because politics can change the world. And we do value the rat race because a rat race can bring us the income that we need. But in this moment, in these weeks ahead, and in the months that some countries and people of these countries have experienced um, illnesses in their communities, whether we understand this time or whether we don't understand it, we're all trying, trying to find answers about it, that we take some time now to really enjoy life in a different way than maybe we did just a week ago or a month ago. And this is not from Jody's mouth. This is from spirit. This is from each and every one of your personal teams, that this is a message in unison from all of the spiritual teams around the world, for all that are hearing now, is to take time, connect with one another, have conversations that you may not have had before, show your love in a way that you may not have shown it before. And then soon, life will get back to normal and we'll all scratch our heads and wonder what happened. And some of us will have lost people. And some of us won't have been touched. And hopefully there won't be very many children that have been hurt. But now this moment is here for us to take a short pause, take advantage of this, Find the glimmers of good, and for some people could be true horror, and really connect as a human race. And so we speak to you from the voice of spirit, to those of you that connect in with this message, to tell you <clears throat> that this is a time now in which the world will reconsider Travel, connections, food, economies, 
medicines, and other elements of earth that are of vital importance. And now it's time to move to the Four of Pentacles, which we are now releasing back into the normal channel. All right, so with the Four of Pentacles, we have um, a woman sitting on the bench with four coins held up against her heart. And we are still in the channel now. And these four coins are held up against her heart and her face is pressed up against one of the coins and her hands are pressed up against the other three. What this signifies is the importance of stability in our lives, the importance of money in our lives. And for all of us and for those of you who have been struggling to find stability, who have been worried about earning, who have been experiencing poverty, who have been experiencing instability in your lives due to a lack of resources, whether it's money or medicine. We ask you to allow yourself to focus on the need for you to have this and allow yourselves to think in an abundant way now so that you can connect in with money, with resources, with those attributes that can help you earn, that can help you maintain and help you build wealth in your lives. And I know this message will mostly go out to Americans, maybe some Canadians and around in Europe and around through all of the world, through Asia, through Africa, through India, through South America, through all the continents, Australia, New Zealand, Russia, Soviet Union, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if all of my land around the world, this is an area that I haven't really studied. That we all work together now as a human race to think about how we can build our resources and combine our efforts to bring in stability now for all people not just for the elite people, not just for the wealthy people, and not just for the people who lack ethics, but for everyone. And that goes down to the individual, the go that goes down to the individual person to do this for him or herself. And it comes down to the family to do this for the family itself and for the community to do this for the community itself and for the state to do this for the state itself or the province, and up and up and up to the top. And I ask any leaders who are here today to think about this. Now, I think I'm getting a little bit excited, so I'm pulling back um, because this is something that is weighed on my heart. This is Jody now. This is weighed on my heart. And I think I'm merging my energy with the energy that's coming through. Um, but maybe that's for a reason as well. So now let's get back to the normal reading. And um, I think this was powerful guidance that came through. Now, Aries, um, if you're still here, you are um, a group of people that really connect in with these messages. For those of you that are still here, and I waited till the last to tell you this, that I have been going through myself and awakening where I'm learning about my own talents, about my own abilities and capabilities, and the ability that I have um, to truly to truly channel um, messages from spirit. And I'm learning how to channel. And um, you were a group of people who um, heard me do this. Um, I believe um, where I did this consciously um, in front of a group of people. And this took a little bit of bravery for me to do this. And this is something I've been working on for the last few weeks. That's why I haven't been doing readings. I've been learning about tarot and I've been learning about how um, I can work together with this ability that I have to channel. So I thank you for listening to this. And I know that it was done for a reason. I know that there are people here of the Aries group that can help to change the world around us. And I know that you were meant to hear this. 
And um, I know that you'll be okay with me being um, open and vulnerable with you because I am quite, um, well, a little bit self-conscious about doing it. So I think that as we end this reading, I will remind you I am going to an extended now, and we're going to look at the people who are around you and their perspectives and maybe even what they think about you. Um, if, if that's the message that comes through, I just have to allow now messages to come through. And that's something that I'm surrendering to. And then we'll take this situation out into the future and we'll see what comes forward. Maybe I'll only take it out two or maybe three um, phases of time into the future. All right, my friends, um, this reading went on a little long. We're almost at 50 minutes, but um, that's how my readings go. So um, I hope this has been helpful for you. I wish you all the best. Thank you for listening to me um, blabber on and on. Um, but it is something that I really have found I don't have a whole lot of control with. So thank you all very much. It's a pleasure and an honor um, to, to record this message for you. Thank you, Aries.